cars are in a very weird spot nowadays. You like fossil fuels, by a lot of people, you're the bad guy. If you wanna support hydrogen, you realize that, okay, maybe getting the hydrogen is not that great to get. And then there's the EV conundrum, which doesn't have uh, the best source of labor. I was on my buddy Cooper's podcast a little bit over a month ago, and we started talking about something that I completely forgot about. The water-powered car. Was it a real thing? Did it exist? And was the guy who invented it mysteriously taken out? And that is what we're gonna talk about today. Like an age-old dream becoming a reality. A local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It will be at least two years before the fuel system goes into mass production. The day it happens will be one the fuel industry hates, but it'll put a smile on the face of those who've had to say at one time or another, fill her up. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're a fan of the UFC, this weekend, don't miss your chance to bet in your favorite fighters battling it out in Canada. Go make your picks on my partner's DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, they are offering new customers who sign up and use my promo code, that dude and bet just $5, get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, new customers can bet just $5 on any of this weekend's fights and receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. And stay in on the action. And use your $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings same fight parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same fight including number of rounds and method of victory. The more bets you combine, the more you can win. And DraftKings is the only place you can bet on same fight parlays. And if sports betting is not available in your state, you can still join in on all the fun on DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the chance to win cash prizes. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use my promo code that dude and bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code that dude only at DraftKings Sportsbook. While on Cooper's podcast, we put on physical tinfoil hats and talked about things that might have changed the industry forever or kind of fun theories about it. One of the things we talked about was the water power car and how it would literally change the world if it was a real thing. This also got us talking about the whole UAP phenomenon, which allegedly from the Pentagon and the military and fighter pilots have no visible propulsion systems, which would use fuel. And think about it, if this vehicle was from a secret government lab or something along these lines, and it was exposed, it would change the world because the entire fossil fuel industry would not need to exist anymore. And neither would the EVs, and neither would hydrogen, and neither would fusion reaction stuff. None of that would matter anymore when it came to transportation. And this sort of way of thinking got me thinking about the water power car. Was it a real thing? Well, let's talk about the brief history of the water power car. Why hasn't this technology ever taken off? And what happened to the inventor? So that takes us back about 50 years or so. And a man named Stanley Meyer. Meyer had a ton of patents basically his entire life. He was incredibly smart and pretty much had all the evidence in a resume to prove it. The patent office always kind of considered him ahead of his time, and he even worked with NASA on the Gemini project. So we're already checking some boxes here. The guy was credible. And at the same time, he just loved to invent things. He was always tinkering and always doing something cool. Stuff that I could never do in a million years. I just make YouTube videos. <laughs> Hope you're proud, mom and dad. So I think you're getting the point. He wasn't a fraud, at least on the surface. So your first gut feeling about this is, was he a fraud? Was he just kind of telling everybody with his credibility that he had built a water power car? And if it was real, how did it exactly work? My theory in this is kind of like the Dale. If you don't know about the Dale, it's an absolutely crazy story and was a scam car that people pre-ordered and the guy ran away with the money because the car wasn't real. <laughs> That's a whole nother thing. Meyer's theory on the water power car wasn't so much to change the world or anything, it was out of necessity. This was supposed to help the US out during 
the oil crisis, which history buffs and car enthusiasts alike know it as the time where American muscle cars absolutely sucked. They were absolutely terrible cars. The American auto industry was collapsing. And at the same time, the US was running out of gas. It was running out of oil. So naturally, you're like, what is the thing that is the most on our planet? He started with water. And this kind of mindset is not really that new because in theory, it would use hydrogen. You remember when everybody thought the entire car industry was gonna go to hydrogen next? Well, EVs have kind of won that battle right now. The cars today use pure hydrogen, but with pure hydrogen, it's pretty hard to get, it's expensive to create, and it's expensive to buy and there's not a lot of hydrogen stations, so getting stranded is a very big possibility. Meanwhile, EVs have their own issues of digging into the ground again. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. In a nutshell, the water-powered car would work like this. You would pour water into the fuel cell. It would then use a process with an electric cell to take the hydrogen and take the oxygen and basically split the hydrogen and then oxygen would come out the tailpipe. So the exhaust would literally be oxygen. So if this was the solution to humanity's energy problems, why aren't we using it? Well, let's talk about the actual vehicle itself. The vehicle itself was a buggy. So he tested it with this buggy. He brought it all over the place. He showed professors from around the world and people were pretty flabbergasted by the creation. They couldn't really believe their eyes that this invention was working right in front of them. And according to pretty much all the eyewitnesses, they all saw this thing work. They all saw it do what it was supposed to do and what Meyer claimed it was going to do. But there's obviously some questions about how it worked, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So after he shows off this vehicle, unfortunately, a whole bunch of lawsuits come his way, which on the surface is really heartbreaking. <laughs> and then after all this, all the showboating, people are just like, nah, that's, that's not new. You're doing things we already knew worked, but it's just not that efficient. So people just didn't like that he was claiming that technology that it can have already been discovered was nothing new. That was the main problem. And people just didn't really make sense of his physics. A lot of people claimed that what he was claiming wasn't physically possible. Most scientists would believe that there was too much energy or where would the energy come from to make the process happen to make the water and hydrogen and oxygen all work in tandem with each other to then create the combustion process or the power process. Well, that's kind of the weird answer of, did we really know if it worked or not? But then why would so many incredibly smart people, professors from around the world, scientists in country, he drove it basically across the country and showed it off. Why would so many people say that it would work? Maybe it could be a psychological thing where people wanted it to work, especially during the oil crisis when many Americans were desperate. It's kind of this weird psychological sleight of hand thing. Was he lying? I don't know. But the most famous part of this story, which almost gives credibility to his watered power car, is that he passed away very mysteriously. According to the doctors, it wasn't so mysteriously. However, he was in a restaurant with his brother. He had like cranberry juice or something like that, drank it, and no more than a few seconds later, stood up, held his neck, and basically collapsed. He was tensed up, he started throwing up, and he basically said the words like, oh, I've been poisoned, or something along those lines. And that was it, he was gone. But the doctors claimed that he had an aneurysm, like a cerebral aneurysm. And yeah, he was getting older, and that seemed pretty fair. But it's the circumstance that really makes people believe he was literally taken out of the equation, which can also be perceived that he was a threat to the entire industry. Even if his car, let's say his car just didn't work. He was a threat anyway to the industry. Why would I say that? It's still a risk to make it work or find a different solution. And if you're an oil tycoon or you work for a big oil company, that doesn't look good. The guy was very smart. If he couldn't make this actually work, he could probably make something else work 
that was more fuel efficient than what was going on at the time. And that is the theory of even if the car didn't work, he was still a threat to everything. Okay, I can see that point of view. Well then, the buggy that everybody raved about and said worked was stolen. Okay, and it turned up later, but it didn't seem like the buggy was torn down or, you know, backwards engineered or anything along those lines. It just was found and now it's stored somewhere. So let's play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Maybe we're missing something. Most scientists today who have studied the car say what he claimed wasn't physically possible. With the best scientists in the world, the technology we have today, the advancements in technology, if this was the blatant answer to our problem, and let's, you know, let's kind of push aside the issues that corporations, companies, bankruptcy, all that, when it came to just the brass tacks of the situation, I think somebody would be able to make a bigger fuss about this nowadays, especially with the internet, if a watered power car was completely possible if you poured tap water into a car and drove away. I feel like the amount of noise it would make if it was theoretically efficient, affordable to build, and also easily accessible, then there's no way we could ignore it. There's absolutely no way. The entire world would be like, what are we doing with all these other solutions we have nowadays? We would be head first into this right now. And like I tell a lot of people, I think the hybrid system of energy should have been the real gap and not going straight to something else. The reason a lot of people say that the car wouldn't work is because the amount of energy going into the car to make this process happen is more than the energy that comes out of the process. Kind of like how fusion is, if you're a super nerd and you know about the fusion stuff, that is mostly why fusion hasn't taken off. We haven't really solved that conundrum yet because we put too much energy in to get energy out, which is not even close to the amount of energy we put in. So I think it's still possible he could have been taken out, but I'm gonna let you decide. I wanted this video to just be an open discussion about the car industry itself really genius people just getting highlighted. What do you think happened? Do you think the car worked? And do you think it's even possible? And on that note, guys, I upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.